Family and Consumer Sciences Extension at the University of Kentucky. Our agents share research knowledge with individuals, families, and communities to improve quality of life. Building strong families, building Kentucky. It starts with us. Hello, I'm Vicki Wynn with the Marshall County Extension Office and I'm the Family and Consumer Sciences Agent uh, at the UK Cooperative Extension Office. Today I want to talk to you about cooking with cast iron. And cast iron has come a long way. It, it's really a versatile uh, utensil in the kitchen uh, and out of the kitchen. We'll talk about that too. But there are so many aspects that are positive about cooking with cast iron and I wanted to talk to you about how you can cook it on top of the stove, uh, in the oven, and also serve from it, as well as cooking with cast iron over an open flame. And I know since we've been restricted and going a lot of places these days, uh, camping has become very popular. It's enabled families to get outside and enjoy the outdoors. And campfire cooking has become very, very popular. And cast iron is just the perfect uh, accessory to take uh, when you're cooking outside and enjoying campfires and preparing food for the family. Um, I'm not here to promote any brand and there are lots of manufacturers of cast iron, but I want to show you some examples of uh, pieces that are available these days and talk about some of the features that they have and some of the accessories that are also available to make it um, a little more useful and easy to use. Um, all the cast iron pieces that you find today that are new and from um, shopping online or in stores, uh, they come pre-seasoned and this has not always been the case. Uh, I remember as a young bride about 45 years ago, I received a cast iron skillet uh, as a wedding present. And at the time, I was not real thrilled with it and I, I never really thought I would use it. But having come from a family that my mom, my grandmother, my great grandmother had always used a lot of cast iron. And I thought, well, there must really be something to this. So I hung on to it and it made several moves and to this day I use that iron skillet for so many things and it was not one of the pre-seasoned ones. So I had to season it and over time it built up the seasoning that was needed to make it a very very versatile piece in the kitchen. And today's uh, versions come already pre-seasoned and in the factory, they are sprayed with um, an oil, which is a food grade oil, which might be um, grapeseed, uh, a soy based um, oil. And they tell me those are really the best oils to season uh, cast iron with. But in the factory, they're already pre-seasoned. So when you get that new piece of cast iron, it's already been treated and so easy to use, just right out of the box. Uh, whenever you're ready to use it for the first time, I'd recommend just rinsing it out, some mild soap, and uh, just rinse it out real well and dry it real well. Um, you know, I hear people say, I've always heard that you're not supposed to use soap on cast iron. Well, that comes from the day and time that lye soap was the norm. And it is not recommended to use lye soap on uh, your cast iron because that is uh, very caustic. Uh, that can damage the uh, seasoning or even the cast iron itself. So uh, just some mild dish detergent soap is perfectly fine. But keeping it dry, keeping it clean is paramount in using um, your cast iron for many, many years. You know, they say that cast iron is meant to last more than a generation. So that means when you're finished with it, you can pass that on 
to your children, your grandchildren, and they can expect to be able to use it for a long, long time as well. I'll talk about seasoning um, your cast iron um, and the steps that really need to be um, gone through to have a good seasoning or a perfect seasoning according to the manufacturers. But when you get your piece of cast iron, um, you want to make sure that it is clean, that it is dry, and after you've used it over time, if it starts to lose some of that natural season and you need to re-season it, or maybe you have a piece that has not been seasoned before, the first thing you'll want to do is place a large baking sheet in the bottom of your oven. Um, you also might want to put some heavy duty foil down there to catch any drips that may occur during the process. But it, it's important that you go ahead and put some kind of liner uh, on the bottom of your oven. You want to set your oven control to 450 degrees. Now that may seem pretty hot, but in order to accomplish this seasoning, um, it is important to heat to 450. Uh, that's one of the properties of cast iron is that it's, it's not a great conductor of heat, but it holds heat. Once it is hot, it holds heat better than any other um, material for cookware. Um, then after you've set the oven to 450, you want to wash that cast iron and make sure that there's no residue. Um, if you need to use a light steel wool, and of course steel wool is very fine, uh, no hard scrubbing, but if there's some areas that need to be thoroughly cleaned, um, light steel wool is okay to use for that. Uh, you want to make sure that it is thoroughly dried after you have washed it. Then the first thing after that you want to do is coat the inside and the out of your pan or your skillet or your griddle with a light layer of mild vegetable oil. And as I said, a soy-based oil is what is recommended, but any kind of vegetable oil uh, is perfectly fine. Um, strong flavors like olive oil sometimes may leave an unwanted um, flavor to some of your pieces, and that's why the vegetable oils are recommended. Then after you have oiled it both top and bottom, you'll want to put it upside down on the top rack of your oven and bake it at that 450 degrees for one hour. Then you want to turn the oven off after one hour and allow it to cool in the oven with the door closed. So you've had it in there, it's been upside down, it's been thoroughly heated, and then you want to turn the oven off after an hour and let it cool with the door closed. Um, then you want to repeat the process of oiling and heating the pan for three or four times, not over an hour each time, but just till it's heated um, and then your pan is ready to cook or whatever your piece is. Um, cast iron will continue to build up uh, a layer of seasoning as you use it. And any kind of oil that you choose to use with whatever you're preparing uh, is perfectly fine to season your pieces with. Uh, just the main thing to remember is nothing abrasive, um, no caustic soap or detergent of any kind needs to be used, and also making sure that it's thoroughly dried before you put it away. And a lot of people tell me they use paper towel after it's totally dry, if they're going to stack maybe some skillets or some pieces, um, one on top of the other. They put either a piece of light cardboard or a paper towel just to make sure that it is totally dry and it's free of any kind of residue after it's put in for storing. Um, we'll look at some of the different types of cast iron. Um, in the last couple of years, they have made a 
series of baking pieces and lots of different manufacturers have jumped on this bandwagon and coming out with all kinds of different shapes and sizes of cast iron. Um, not only is cast iron so durable, but it is so economical. Um, you can get most pieces for around $20 or in that range. Uh, with the exception of a very large skillet and the Dutch oven, but most of the other pieces are very inexpensive. And the thing of it is, if you take good care of it, it's going to last you, like we said, for more than a generation. So any of these, um, I, I like to think of this as the brownie pan, even though it can be used for biscuits, it can be used for a cobbler, it can be used for so many different things. And we know that it requires the same type of care as your skillets and some of the other pieces. But this baking series has been very popular. <clears throat> and also one of the pie pans. And since we talked about how cast iron holds heat really well, uh, they tell me that the pie crust in this is top notch. I've, I've had a pie from um, using the cast iron and it was, it was like no other crust I'd ever had before, but it's just because of the surface, the heat, the high heat and um, the way that it bakes in the cast iron. So it gives it a texture and adds to the flavor that no other um, pie pan can do. So I highly recommend checking in to that. And then of course, um, improvements over the years have been made. Um, typical skillets would have a single handle, such as this handle here on an iron skillet would be one handle. A lot of people said that was difficult to hold, especially with the weight with food in that. So they came up with the two-handled version. And also one of the accessories is the cover for the handle. Uh, you can put a couple of those on and we can see how easy they're to put on and use. And it acts like a pot holder. It acts like um, a protection against that heat. And these are made out of silicone plastic. So it, it's really durable. It can be washed and it holds up to the heat. So these are very, very handy to have if you use a lot of cast iron in your cooking. And then, of course, there's a griddle uh, with the textured bottom. And again, this can be used on top of the stove, can be used inside the oven, and also can be used on a grill in addition to the open fire but these are also very very versatile in that uh, you can sear a steak you can sear chicken breast um, just adds that extra flavor and uh, the cooking time is reduced uh, a lot with using these cast iron pieces and then of course another accessory that's very handy to use is the one that can remove the uh, cleanup and the residue there from your cooking and it makes sure that you can take care of cleanup and get every bit of food that is left there. Also the see-through lids are very very handy and those come in round and square and we want to make sure that we're uh, keeping these clean as well. Of course, they require a different type of clean. Uh, these, these are dishwasher safe in terms of the lid. Now, we never ever want to put our cast iron in the dishwasher, but the, um, the lids and the accessories can be washed in the dishwasher. Uh, there's a scraper, the two different types that can help us with cleanup. Um, also, wooden utensils are recommended with your cast iron. Um, a lot of metal forks or slotted spoons or um, metal utensils 
have more of an abrasive effect on the seasoning of your cast iron and wood is more forgiving and we're just able to use it without damaging the seasoning or without damaging the cast iron. Um, this is something that may be a little new to you, but it's called a chain mail or a chain link. And all of the individual little circles are welded together. So there's no sharp edges. And this is a tool that can be used to help to clean when we need to remove some stubborn cooked on food. Sometimes that happens even in the best of non-stick um, cast iron. But to remove that during the cleaning process, a lot of times it's fine to add just a little bit of water, scrub with the chain mail, chain link, and we want to make sure that we thoroughly clean this after it has been used. So that's something that uh, is highly recommended by all the manufacturers that we want to use the safest and least abrasive method to remove all the food. <clears throat> Some of the single use um, or single serving um, pieces are very popular. This has been used um, a lot for individual desserts or dessert for two uh, for looking out for portion sizes. But this can be used uh, for a chocolate chip cookie with a scoop of ice cream on top or a brownie. Or we could even uh, do a single egg in a, um, a little griddle like this size. So there's all kinds of sizes and shapes for everybody. The pizza pan is very popular uh, because of what the cast iron is made of and how it cooks. Pizza crusts are very, very um, brown and crispy on the bottom and tender on the top. So again, this can be used in the oven. It can be used on the grill. Uh, it can be used on an open campfire. So we, we've all been familiar with some of the pieces like the cornbread sticks and this one uh, is pre-seasoned as well. Uh, they make these, I think there's a five uh, or a six or a seven cornbread stick. So these have been around for a long time and they are very popular because of the way they cook and uh, they have a golden brown crispy texture and very, very popular with cast iron. Also, there's casserole dishes, and you may have eaten in a restaurant before where they have served you uh, some kind of entree in a piece of cast iron like this. And so this definitely is something that uh, for one or two people, uh, it's a very good size and uh, again, very durable, can be used on top of the stove, in the oven, or outdoors over an open fire. Just lots of different uses for that. Um, this pan is a, a really good size. It can be used for uh, cinnamon rolls, for biscuits. It can be used for even a breakfast casserole. There's just all kinds of uses for all of these sizes. Um, I'll show the casserole, uh, I'm sorry, the Dutch oven. <coughs> of course, it's, it's a heavy piece, but the Dutch oven, of course, comes with a lid, and it's there. And also these handy Dutch oven liners, uh, aluminum pans, and you can buy these um, 10 or 12 at a time, and it does make cleanup so much better. And the liners come in different sizes to fit whichever cast iron. I think this is a 10 inch, there's also a 12 inch, but all of these things help us to uh, be more efficient in the kitchen or outdoors. If, if we're doing outdoor cooking, it would be good to have the uh, liner and you can take that out and put another one in and prepare something else. So I, I just want to uh, remind you about 
the seasoning of your cast iron and taking care of it because you do want it to last for a long, long time. We want to make sure that we're keeping it dry, that we are protecting the seasoning, that if it starts to wear and we need to re-season, then we can do that as well. But all the pieces that you see here are so versatile, they're inexpensive, and they can last a long, long time if they are cared for well. Here at the Extension Office, we have a publication about cooking with cast iron. We have some recipes, we have um, the steps to take when you want to season your cast iron. Uh, so for that information, please reach out, give us a call or stop by, and we're more than happy to give you that publication. So until next time, thank you, and I'm Vicki Wynn with the Marshall County Extension Office.